All right, so in the last video, we talked about how to do blob tracking and capture this cute little pup on the ground. Um, this video is totally optional. It's gonna be a bit more of a deep dive into our blob class, um, which is something that I've created in P5.js to allow you to do this. Um, if you don't care about all the details or it's just a little too much, um, feel free to skip ahead. That's totally cool. But I just wanted to show you how you can use object-oriented programming for something like this. Um, so this took a long time. This is not something that happens quickly or easily. There's a lot of planning involved. There's a lot of dead ends trying to figure stuff out. But um, so, you know, it kind of looks easy now because it's all finished, but this was um, quite a bit of figuring to happen. Um, so I'm using a class for this because I wanna be able to store lots of different data about my blob and I need different methods to calculate parts of my blob as well. So a class is a really awesome way to do this. Um, my constructor, I'm passing in the source, that's either the, um, the frame of the video, the image or the canvas. And then these optional arguments that we talked about last time, concavity, meaning how tightly the blob conforms um, and resolution, meaning does it look at every pixel or every two or four pixels or whatever. Um, then this, uh, these two sections here set those variables um, and these are optional. So by defining it this way, if concavity is not set when we do the blob detection, it'll default to its um, value of 20. Otherwise we can use the value that's sent in. This is like a really easy shorthand for adding extra optional arguments to your class or to any function. Okay, then other variables, I've got a width and a height, um, an outline, uh, the convex hull and the bounding box. We talked about those in the last um, example. And then basically all the work happens then when we run this blob detection. So it gets the outline, it gets the centroid, the bounding box and calculates the area, um, which is all kind of a cumulative process. So first we get the outline using the source image. Then we get the centroid using the hull um, as well as the bounding box that way. And then the area is computed from the outline. So let's um, walk through kind of some of this process. The first step is to get the outline for the blob. That's the orange outline here. And um, we want to just first grab a list of all the black pixels in the image. So I load the source, the uh, pixels of the source and create an empty list. And then I go through every single pixel or if the resolution is uh, greater than one, it steps by every two or whatever. And then I'm grabbing um, the, if the pixel is below the certain threshold, I'm grabbing the X and Y coordinate. That's really simple, super easy. Uh, and then the real hard work here happens using this hull.js library. So that's this code here. We're not gonna go through this in large part because I don't really know how it's all working. There's a lot of fancy math here. Um, we first grab the outline using the concavity measure. Um, the hull library also allows us to specify a concavity of infinity. Uh, which is a built-in variable in JavaScript. Um, this was actually new to me. I've never had to use infinity before. Um, to compute the convex hull, that's the outline here in blue. So that work all happens somewhere else. I'm sorry, I can't explain it super well to you. If you know, that's great. Please, you know, feel free to explain it to me. That'd be awesome. Um, then the last step I'm doing, and this is totally optional, but um, the, the points given back to us from hull.js are in this format. So it's like a little list with X and Y. I find it kind of cumbersome. So I'm just going through both of these and converting them to vectors, which will allow me to access the values with dot X and dot Y. Okay, so that's the get outline. That's, that's it, it computes the hull, it computes the outline. Um, the centroid then is this whole other um, process. And I've included here a link to where I found this algorithm. Um, and once again, I'm not sure I can super well explain it to you. Um, but essentially we have a value for center X and Y, and then this value for determinant. And then there's some math here where it computes, I think it's the cross product. Oh shoot, I should know. Let's put it, let's open this tab here. Um, this is what happens when I don't look at a time. So this article I think does an awesome job of explaining and it'll do it much better than me. I mean, to me, the, I get a little lost here. One of the things I like about these kind of articles is often there'll be code. So um, this is written in C++ and I just converted it to JavaScript for you here. Um, so it goes through all the points. It then slowly updates this centroid position and then does a little extra math. And then I'm turning that um, into a vector again. So same idea here. And it has something to do with the center of triangles made from the polygon. I'm afraid that's as far as I can explain it for you, but it's, it's really interesting. 
Um, then the bounding box, this is really easy. So the bounding box is just a square around those points. And basically all you need to do is calculate the minimum and maximum of the X and Y, and you can use that to figure out your bounding box. Um, so I create these variables and I set the minimum number to the maximum possible value. So if, um, and that, that way, no matter what, when I look, um, whatever values I find are gonna be smaller than that. So number.max value is built into JavaScript. It's some outrageously huge number. Same for min value, and I do it for both of these. Then I go through all the points. If the X point is less than the minimum, then we set the minimum to that. Same for max and same for the Y points. So we go through the whole thing. And then when we're done, um, we can compute the bounding box. So the bounding box starts at the minimum X and Y coordinate. And then its width is the maximum X minus the minimum X and same for Y. Now I've stored this in an object because I think it makes it easier. Instead of having a variable called like B box X, B box Y, B box width. Um, this contains it all in its own variable called bounding box, um, which then has an X and a Y and a width and height. So when I draw um, that shape up here, I say blob.bbox.x, so it's like double dot syntax. Um, but I think this makes it much cleaner for us to keep track of. Again, you know, when you make your own class or your own functions, you could totally make it work the way that works best for you. Then uh, let's say, oh, we talked about bounding box. And then the area. So the area is calc of a polygon is calculated using this thing called the shoelace formula, which again, I don't think I'm gonna be able to explain to you very well, um, but basically we create these two sums, you go through all the points um, and it's sort of like jumping around somehow. Boy, I really don't actually know. Um, anyway, this computes that area and gives us the result. So when we're done, when we run the constructor here and create a new blob, it does all of this work and gives us these results. If in your application you knew you didn't need all this stuff, one way you could speed this up would be by commenting out. Maybe you don't need the area. Maybe you don't need the bounding box. Um, you know, maybe you don't need anything except for the outline or the convex hull. You could tune this to kind of work the way you want. Um, but that's it. That's uh, blob tracking. There's definitely some limitations here, ways that you could kind of improve this. Um, but I think it's really fun. And um, it's kind of an old school way. But um, again, I really like it because I was able to make this with P5.js and not have to rely on a ton of um, really, really fancy code to make this happen.